Hello. This is a small swamp not far away from Kagashima. It's very south of the Kyushu Island, which in turn is the most southern big island of Japan. Small swamp across the Kagashima Bay, you can see Sakurajima mountain volcano, which is working today on November 14th. So, what is going on? This place is very famous, at least locally, but I don't understand why this place is not worldwide famous, because what you see is the most northern stand of mangroves. So this is the most northern mangroves in the world. This is a 31st degree of the northern latitude, but North Tropic is very far away from here. North Tropic will go like in Taiwan, to which is a big distance. Mangroves here grow probably naturally. There is a hypothesis that mangroves were planted at some point, but most of Japanese researchers, they actually think that this is a natural step. So how they got here and why mangroves, which is question is related, why mangroves do not go to the more northern places. Actually, I will start with the second one. More northern places is interesting. There are many well seas and rivers to the north which have that particular mixture of salt and fresh water which mangroves like or actually survive on this soil very well. One of reasons might be ice. Of course, when things are freezing for the winter, then these roots and young seedlings of mangroves will be damaged. It's no question. But there are many places which have a similar condition, which however have no mangroves whatsoever. Another answer is, well, related with my explanation of what's the difference between spore and seed plants. So I found, I hope, the simple way to explain it. Because like it's very hard to explain all this microscopic and complicated life cycle details. I typically say that seed plants have a two-step life cycle. Whereas spore plants have one step. In seed plants, the first step flower will open for pollination. And then flower might be closing, but it will stay here on the plant for what? For ripening of seed. That's the second step. So, if you don't even know what is a seed, how to find it, you still can mention that sexual organs, flowers or cones on seed plants will stay much longer than organs which might be similar. For example, consider this cycas, cycas female strobilus, very similar to fur. So, they are much longer. And mangroves. This one is, by the way, Candelia. Candelia candle, well, it is related to the red mangroves, the same family, Rizophoraceae. There are slight morphological differences, and this species doesn't form aerial roots. But otherwise, it's very similar in many other respects. So, look on them. They have something strange. They have some interesting structure on tops of the plant. What are they? They not fruits. This is a third step. So mangroves, they are viviparous plant, which developed the third step. Again, at first flower opens. Second, seeds will ripe. Third, instead of going out, mangroves will keep the seeds on a plant until seeds will start to germinate and you will see this long, long structure which going out of the fruit, which is what? It's hypocotyl, sorry for the word. You know hypocotyls very well. It's an edible part of radish. So hypocotyls will go out of the fruit, and these hypocotyls belong to the seedling, belong to the new plant. So new plant will wake up on mother plant. For which reason? Well, soil here, is extremely muddy. 
and these embryos actually seedlings will go out of the mother plant in a much more better condition they don't want to spend long time to germinate they already germinated and they might start much faster it's very important also because many mangroves not these ones but others also will grow on a tidal zone and tide might cover the plant and damage young seedlings so actually seedlings of mangroves of mangroves of Rhizophoraceae family that particular group of mangroves are very interesting but this again is a third step which means in very simple way that mangroves require much longer time for the development and these young structures young seedlings these hypocotyls are likely vulnerable to all these bad environmental conditions then mangroves do not go north and in addition how to get to the north that's question related to is how they get here the nearby place or nearest place from this stand is on Yakushima Island the same species Candelia grows in the mouth of Kurio River the stand there is even smaller than this one but it's most close to the south next one will be on Amamejima and so on and so forth on Okinawa and then on Iriamoto and Taiwan and so on so how this mangroves distributed it's open question maybe these young things well seedlings hypocotyls they can survive some ocean currents for some time typhoons are not actually very rare here typhoons may be strong and fast so supposedly some typhoon brought plants for well, kind of seedlings from Yakushima to this place in Kagoshima and from that time we have this most northern stand of mangroves uh, I cannot exclude this situation that this mangrove is just the rest the last one of much more stands which disappeared for some reason this is also possible so this again is a three-step plan viviparus viviparus mangrove candelia uh, by the way in japan they call it female mangroves because these seedlings <laughs> hypocotyls were used as hairpins for the women and this one is protected and i hope this place Nukumi will be more worldwide known because this is a nice demonstration of kind of vital force of mangroves so probably you can cultivate mangroves they're very important they keep solar they take uh, carbon dioxide they produce plenty of wood in places where otherwise production is almost impossible so for example maybe mangroves can grow in south carolina and in georgia if we take this example of candelia candle in japan so thank you very much